So let me ask you, well, you know what, I, I, let me, that brings up something that I have heard on more than one occasion from people who were super elite achievers in whatever field of endeavor they're in, that when they look at their performance, they think that the last 10 or 20% of their performance often comes from negative emotions, which is their ability to get in touch and almost tolerate their fears. Do you see that? What do you mean last 10 or 20 percent? Kind of like, you know, that last it's almost kind of like the last, you know, 10 percent of of charging a battery, whether it's with a car or a phone, often takes the longest. So, you know, when you think about golf, for example, since you're involved when you're involved heavily in golf, you know, the step up from winning a PGA tournament and winning a major term tournament is that ability to get in touch with that negative a moment that can fuel a different level of ingenuity or performance. Um, you know, that, that could be true. I mean, what, basically what you're saying is, uh, that negativity can light a fire under someone is what you're saying. But there's some good to that. Absolutely. Um, negative mo- motivation is far more powerful than positive motivation. Uh, being the, the prospect of losing something is far more pow- powerful than the prospect of gaining something. Uh, so loss aversion is more powerful than than acquisition, so, so to speak. Uh, so that, that's that's true. That's true. Um, but it, it isn't it isn't necessarily a strategic thing to where someone says, well, I'm here. I better introduce some negative emotion or something negative so that I can climb on that negative step and gain that. And, you know, it has to happen organically. Right. So. Uh, so I. Yes. There is, there is absolute truth to that. Um, you know, a lot of the motivation that comes from people who achieve is that during their childhood they were they were ridiculed, mm-hmm. and that is a, that is an enormously powerful motivator. 